For a free on-air reading, call now, 800-848-WABC. That's 800-848-9222. Oh, my gosh. Here's Laura. Yeah. Well, here I am. Thank you, Jay Kirsch. Beautiful voice. Always opening all my shows. If you ever need him to sell your product or business, go to ProTunes.com. That's P-R-O-T-O-O-N-S for Jay Kirsch. Well, grateful to be here, and I'm so excited. Maiden Voyage. Uh, third time around, I'm doing this program, and this is my dream come true to have it on WABC, and I could not be happier. I am just beyond ecstatic to be here live with you today. You know me from Living Better, which is on Saturday afternoons, but uh, now we're doing Above and Beyond at 7 p.m. on Sundays. And uh, by the way, happy Palm Sunday if you are celebrating, and a week from today, it will be Easter, so I won't be on next Sunday, most likely, uh, but we'll return with the program Above and Beyond right after that after easter so and also it's passover this week what an amazing sacred week this is and so i think it's just fitting to have on somebody who really touches into a, a sacred space for millions of people he is probably the most uh proficient and up-and-coming celebrity medium in the world right now and he's graced my other programs uh living better and the saturday cafe and you love him so much i couldn't help but bring him back and he has a brand new book that he's been promising for a year. Thomas John, Manhattan Medium, welcome Thank to you. my show. Thanks so, for having me. The first, Such a pleasure. Oh my gosh. I love having you on. And you know, the, the phones are kind of blowing up right now. <laughs> Everybody and, and their brother and mother and sister calling in to get free readings from you. And we're going to do that in just a moment. Manhattan Medium, Thomas John, is that. He's a medium, but he is also hosting all sorts of book talks all over the country right now because your brand new book just came out March for just this month. Never argue with a dead person and uh, these are true and unbelievable stories from the other side you have already uh, it's apparently like climbing up the bestseller chart already is that true <laughs> a lot of people have been really responding to it yeah it's been it's been it's been quite a humbling experience to see everybody you know coming up to me and telling me how the you know they've related to a certain story or they've connected with a certain character in this in the one of the chapters so it's been really humbling and wonderful these are actual readings that you've had with people that you got permission to use as stories in the book but you changed obviously people's names and and locations so um they they remain anonymous in that sense but the stories are very true and very real they are really poignant some of them are funny i have found myself laughing out loud and other ones just make me cry like a little baby that's really the work that you do here on a daily basis you when you do readings for people what i love about you is your details are so poignant but you're you often imbue them with humor and also the depth as well so people kind of go between those two emotions i've seen you do readings Readings in your spirit circles and in your large audience readings uh, so often, and, and you do touch people. This book is wonderful. Never argue with a dead person. So people can see you actually on April Fool's Day, this Wednesday, April 1st, at the Barnes & Noble Upper West Side right here in Manhattan on Broadway. That's correct. Yes. So I'm going to do it at 7 o'clock. Um, you are, you are going to want to get there early because it's not a ticketed event. And so it's a public event where it's a free event. There's no charge. Um, if you've read the book or you're just curious about, you know, what it is that I do, you're welcome to come on down and check it out. I am going to talk about the book and then I am going to do some audience readings too. So you might be one of the people that I do a reading for. Oh my gosh. That is so exciting. I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, you, you have such a schedule and people are dying to get in to see you and I know sometimes there's a wait list and everything so this again this is taking place this Wednesday on the Upper West Side at the beautiful Barnes and Noble there it's a spectacular Barnes and Noble I'm so grateful that it's still here you know everyone says the you know bookstores are gone well this one is huge and it's not and it's happening and they've got a great audience room on the second floor it's 2289 Broadway which is Broadway between 82nd and 83rd streets as Thomas John said, get there early, probably around 6 or 6.30, because it'll fill up. There's only seats for like 150, 200 people. Yeah, I mean, we're hoping that, you know, I mean, there'll be standing room and stuff. And, you know, you, I don't, I, I'm just expecting there's going to be a large sum of people. So you just yeah, get there early, get there at 6.30, get your seat, and uh, we'll start right at 7 for the for the talk and then the readings and then a book signing. Well, since you are psychic, yes, I guess you could see. <laughs> you, you see already that people are going to be hanging out the doors uh, trying to get in. <laughs> That's wonderful stuff. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about that but never argue with a dead person just real quick right before we go into our readings how'd you come up with that title it's hilarious well it really comes from the fact that when people cross over they have messages for us and instead of 
um, running from it or being scared about it or being nervous about it or thinking that it's bad or thinking that it's evil. The the story, the title was really meant to say, you know, just don't argue with them. Just listen to them. They have something to say. And uh, they're not God over there. You know, they're not psychic. They're not aware of everything. They don't have all the answers, but they do have guidance and they do have ways to give us messages to kind of put us on our path and, and help us. And they do understand things to a greater degree over there with a little bit more depth. It's like having a really kind of smart, intuitive, aware, about, you know, good friends. So you should use them as a resource. Absolutely. Use use your loved ones on the other side as a resource. I talk to my grandparents often, mm-hmm. and I, I just kind of let them know what's going on and ask them if they can give me a little boost here and there, and I, I just know they hear me. Mm-hmm. I just It's a feeling I know. Can we go to the phones? Yes, let's do that. All right. We are going to take our first call of the evening. We have Trisha in Manhattan. Thank you so much for kicking off Above and Beyond tonight. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Thomas. <clears throat> I lost my husband several years ago, and I I feel him around me all the time, and I keep getting these messages, whether I look at the clock and it's 11-11 or 3-3-3, three, 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 or, and I, I just have, I have some questions more personally than professionally, and I just feel like he's been trying to tell me something, and when I found out you were doing the show tonight, it all kind of clicked, and so um, I'm... That's what I'm. I'm kind of looking for. Okay, and, and what's your what was your husband's first name? Wayne. Okay, um, you know what I'm what I'm hearing is I have actually there's two people coming through for you, so I'm not sure who the other person is, but I, I'm making a connection to cancer. There's someone who had yes. cancer, yes. and um, I'm is that your husband? Yes. Okay, because uh, the, there's definitely someone with cancer, and then I'm getting another person who ooh, I feel. Uh, some sort of heart thing, but I'm not exactly sure. But yes. I feel I feel a heart thing. My but dad. okay, so just I feel like they are definitely coming together. I I feel like your husband when he's coming through, he's definitely telling me that there's how do I want to say this? There's gonna I feel there's gonna be another person for you, um, and he's saying you just need to be patient. I mean, is it true that since he's crossed over, you haven't really you haven't really found a, a new person? No, I haven't. Okay, because I definitely I get a sense that there there is someone there for you. It just you you haven't made. I don't feel you've met you haven't met the person yet. But he's saying that just so you know, there is going to be another person for you and stuff. I felt with him also. Um, one of the things he's telling me is he likes to. Uh, this is going to be kind of convoluted for me to explain, but he likes to send signs to you through. People that knew him, like it's almost like he'll he'll send you like he'll he'll send someone in your life like who maybe you haven't talked to, but they'll say, oh, I knew your husband. I really liked him or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's like I feel that's a way he kind of guides or or lets you know he's around. I think I feel that the numbers are are definitely uh, definitely, you know, I feel like the numbers are definitely from him, too. Is 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 your just when your dad's coming through is your mother? She must. Is she still in the physical Yes. Okay. Because it just when dad's coming through, he def he he keeps acknowledging um mm-hmm. he keeps acknowledging her. And the other thing I I feel like is um just with 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 your husband here, um he's um yeah, he's kind of like uh <laughs> I I see so, I don't know what this is, but there's a, like a specific connection to a memory he's bringing up with a beach. I don't know what it is, but he's talking about yeah. like being on the beach and um the other thing is, is this is more, I'm just kind of getting this around you, but like I said, when they're over there, they do have an awareness of other things. They do know things. They do have, they do have an understanding of things. And one of the things he's telling me is that, uh, you know, this is, I don't feel like this is really something that was in maybe your husband's, you know, vernacular. So I don't feel like it's maybe something that he really knew about when he was in the physical. But what he's telling me is, um, I, I, I keep seeing something about books around you, like writing books or you're, you know, there's something for you to do with writing of books. And your husband is just saying, it's almost like he wants to kind of give you a little nudge. Like he's saying like, you know, do it. It's time to do it. Um, and I, I, I know he's, is there some sort of anniversary with him that just passed or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cause he's bringing, I see a white, like a white balloon. And when I see one white balloon, that always means like, you know, Hey, there was a, there was a, mm-hmm. something just happened. It just acknowledged. You know, he's so, yeah, he's, he's really powerful. I think the signs, you know, and sometimes I see he's 
um, he, he, one of the things he's saying is just how much you made him laugh, and he he misses that that laughing with you because I feel like you you know you got you guys you just he you know the, there is a missing. He just said that you brought a lot of joy to his life, but I know he's around you, and I know that the books when you choose to go in that direction, I I see it being all very successful. Mm. So thank Tr- you so much, Trisha. Uh, what about the beach? Does that mean anything to you? It means everything, and in fact, his ashes are at the ocean where we used to go to the beach uh, oh. every weekend. Oh, wonderful And so stuff. it means everything. Yeah. Oh, thank you and so much, my dear. Thank you for calling tonight. Thank you so much. So appreciate it. My guest, thank you very much. The beautiful stuff, and that's the way it happens when Thomas John comes on the show. Uh, you go right to the heart of the matter. Do you want to do one more call, or should we take a short break? Let's, let's, um, let's, do, uh, let's go for a quick break. Quick break. All right. I, I listen to my medium. I'm a medium for the medium. So it's great to have you here. The Manhattan medium, Thomas John, is in the house. You can go to his website. It is manhattanmedium.com. Manhattanmedium.com. You can find out all of the things. I mean, he's got so much going on between the book talks. He has retreats. He helps you learn how to be more psychic. He also does private readings. You name it. It's all there at Manhattan Medium. Com. And don't forget, pick up Never Argue with a Dead Person. Why not go this week, in fact, on April 1st, April Fool's Day, and go to the Barnes & Noble on 82nd and 83rd Street on Broadway in Manhattan, and you can have him sign the book for you and even get a picture with him. He's so handsome. My gosh. And it's not a joke. <laughs> it, that's not a joke. <laughs> this is Above and Beyond with Laura Smith, our maiden voyage. I'm so grateful to be with you. We'll be right back. Don't go away. More of your phone calls. Welcome back. Maiden Voyage of Above and Beyond with Laura Smith. Above and Beyond Radio. 7 p.m. on Sundays now. I will have the world's top mediums, psychics, astrologers, and the world's top transformational leaders. People with conversations like you heard with Marianne Williamson. People who are actually affecting the world with the work that they do. And I I am just so grateful to be able to bring you content like this because it's really the passion of my heart. And I'm so grateful to have Manhattan Medium Thomas John here, which, by the way, so you know, if you don't get through tonight, because I know the phones go really crazy when he comes on, he is going to be on two, maybe even sometimes three times a month when his schedule permits. So please don't get too discouraged if you don't get through tonight. We're going to keep doing this 7 p.m. on Sundays, just maybe not Easter next week, but after that. So um, yeah, there it is, above and beyond. We're going to go back to the phones. Pamela in Las Vegas, you have been waiting a long time. What is your question for Thomas John? Um, My husband recently passed away about four months ago. And I'm just really struggling without him. Okay, honey. So let me just see it, and I can pull connect with him and just see if he has any messages for you. Oh, so right. you said he passed pretty recently. Yes, about four months ago. Okay. Just when I connect with him, I I want to tell you that I, I'm I'm getting a, a few different things with him. But the first thing I'm getting with him is there's. Do you understand a connection to some sort of pneumonia? That's what he had. Okay, because he's sort of, he's bringing through a lot of congestion in the heart, lungs, and I want to say, you know, he, this was a man who I felt like was a very classy guy, and one thing he he said that you kind of worry about or want to know about is he, you know, he's he he he. he you know, when, when he went out, he was very sick at the end. He said that he was at the hospital a lot. He had to be on life support. He was in the hot. You know, you know, does that make sense to you that yes. there, there was a lot of that going on at the end, right? Yes, he okay. was on life support. OK, now, I don't know if this connects with you, but I do want to bring through. There is a younger female that he's describing as a daughter that he was reconnected with already that when he passed away. So did he have a daughter that passed? Yes, she passed in October. Oh, okay. So just they sort of went over together or they were together. Um, I, I, I know that she was, seems like, I don't know if it was like a different, I, I don't know if different marriage or something, but uh, he's, he's just saying, you know, because it felt a little separate from you, but he's just saying he wants you to know that he was connected with her. There's actually another young girl that comes too. I don't know who that is, but it's like him. And then, and then he would, he, he said, t- he said actually to tell you I'm with the other young girl. Now, um, I want that's do, his granddaughter. Oh, okay, honey, perfect. So that those are who he's with. I want to talk okay. about your finances because when I'm connecting with your husband, he is 
Um, by the way, was he somebody who, who liked to listen to the radio? Because he thinks it's really cool that he's talking to you on the radio right now. Oh, was- he loved the radio, and he used to be a disc jockey. Because <laughs> he's like, he goes, yeah, I'm back on the radio. <laughs> okay. But I want to just tell you that... Um, when when he when he's coming through, I know that you guys had a lot of stuff. You you he he said you had a lot of conversations at the end about finances that you kind of talked about finances and stuff. And I do feel he's worried about some of the debt that's around you or financial stuff that you're. You know, I do. I feel like you're you know going into bankruptcy. No, but do I feel like there's financial stresses around you and that the things aren't current and stuff? He he's just talking about a little bit about that. So. Are you kind of a little bit behind the eight ball right now? Um, I've just gotten some of that resolved. Okay, good. So he's probably happy about that because he did say at the end that you guys, you know, you you talked about that. You actually had a conversation about his finance, you know, what was going to happen and stuff. I feel at some point it's not around the corner, but he did say that you are going to move and that will sort of help with things too. And uh, yeah, I know he's at peace. He's around you. He said that you guys had a fabulous bond, that you were very, very close. He considers you like a best friend. And I know he's around you. He'll keep guiding you. And I can't imagine and if you ever went to see a medium that he wouldn't come through because he's such a powerful energy. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, sweetie. Oh, God bless. And I really enjoyed your book. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Pamela. Much love to you. So touching. My guest is Manhattan medium Thomas John. We're taking phone calls, your phone calls here on Above and Beyond with Laura Smith. The next call, we're going to go to Jim in Livonia, Michigan. People listening all over the nation right now. Knowing after you put it on your 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 huge list, and I put it all over Facebook and uh, social media, so great to have you on, Jim. What is your question for Thomas John? I was wondering if he had any connections with my ex-wife concerning the children. Okay. Um, okay. So your ex- and when did she cross? The three years ago. Okay. Three three years ago. Okay, I got you. Um, you know, what I feel is uh I feel a couple of things. Um I, I want to. I definitely want to bring through your ex-wife, but I have to kind of honor who's also there. So there's like some other energies there. I'm not really sure exactly who they are, um, but I just sort of want to acknowledge there's there's more than one person coming for you. So I want to tell you first off, do you connect to Charles? Yes, I do. Okay, is that somebody crossed over? Yes. Okay. Because there's definitely a Charles coming through. And I want to say also there, there's some, somebody, I don't even know who this is, is to you. I mean, it, it, it's a female. I mean, there's somebody, Vicky or Victoria. Um, do that you know who that is? That was his daughter. Okay. Well, they're, they're there too. I don't, you know, it doesn't feel like such a strong connection. I was, I, I keep seeing a farm, but I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, just when you're, when you're, when, so th- that, that set is there. And then I also see this, this other, um, this other woman who's coming through. Did, now, your, um, your, your ex-wife who passed, did she have cancer? Yes. Okay. Cause she's just bringing, that's the, the way she's kind of connecting that she had the cancer passing. She wants to tell you that actually one thing I'm hearing is that she, She's very, um, she, she's, uh, I feel like there's a son of yours, like you and her must have had a son that she's saying she's watching over quite a bit, um, that she's, you know, she says she's connected to and she's saying something about, I don't know, wanting to spend more time with the kids. Um, and the other thing she's saying is, um, there's a connection to you. Sometimes I can't control what they talk about, so they'll just sort of bring up whatever they want to bring up. But one thing she was saying is, um, do you have a Kathy? Because I want to uh, something about Kathy. I hear that name. Do you know that name? Yes. Okay. Because she she wants to say something about I like Kathy, or I'm happy that you're with Kathy, or I'm happy that Kathy's around, or I'm happy that you know Kathy. She's somehow saying that that's a, a positive thing. Uh, is that someone you're dating or something? That's my wife. Oh, that's your new one. Okay. Um, one thing also she's saying is just you, you know, just know that you guys are, she consti- considers you still a friend. And she's happy with how you've really improved on yourself. I feel like there's a very clear marking where you kind of had a lot of negativity around you and you, you choose to kind of, you chose to kind of step forward away from that. And she said that she's really, she's really very happy about that. Do you, do you know a John, by the way, John? 
Yes, that would have been one of Charles' sons. Okay, one of his sons. So that might just be him stepping forward again. Just know that she said that... Um, one, one, I, I feel like this is just with the different families, it gets a little complicated, but I'm doing my best for you. But just with your, with your wife, um, she wants to say that you, but, but who's Patty? Do you have a Patty? Hello? That was her name. Oh, her name. Okay. Um, just, okay. So now she's com- coming more. I guess she's saying that there's a son that there's one son she keeps circling. I know, I know that there's other kids, but there's an, one son she keeps talking about that she's saying that uh, th- things are going to get a little bit better for him. I feel like he's either financially struggling or going through financial problems or going through an issue with his finances. And, you know, she said, don't don't worry about it because it's going to get better for him and he's going to be able to get the house that he wants or something. That's kind of what she's bringing forward for me. Jim, I hope that's been helpful for you. Yes, I sure appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for calling in today. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Lot, lots of relatives uh, <laughs> vying for your attention. Manhattan medium Thomas John is here today and we're taking calls live on the air. This is Above and Beyond with Laura Smith. Um, let's go to, uh, Maria in Seattle, Washington. Hi, Maria. We've got people calling in and also listening on WABCradio.com. Welcome to the show. You're on with Thomas John. Thank you. Hi, what's your question, honey? Hi, Thomas. I was just, um, I lost my dad when I was 20 years old, about 22 years ago. Uh Uh-huh. And there was kind of some questions in my own mind, whether it was an accident or a suicide. And I'm wondering if that's something that you can kind of get a sense of well i need to i need to see first if i can connect with your dad i don't know if i can connect with him but let me see if i can bring something through so i can sort of validate a connection with him and then we can see so you don't know if there was a suicide or an accident with him yes okay i want to say that when i'm connecting with you i immediately feel there's three people that are coming through so i think this must be your dad because i'm getting a guy who passed kind of suddenly but who's grandma donna 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 i keep hearing uh, that that's now. my grandma okay that's so my she, dad's j- mom. just she's she's around there too and there's another guy that's coming through and he i don't know because he's not telling me his name he's just he goes i'm grandpa i'm the i'm the one that just went i just i my just grandpa Jean. okay because there's one he, there's like that those are the people I'm seeing. So how are those connected to your dad? Is that is, D- Donna must be your dad's mom? Yes. Okay. Still alive. Oh, okay. So I don't know who this person is, but somebody's identifying with Donna, though. So it could okay. be maybe somebody on that side, or I don't know if there's a double Donna. So your, your dad's mom is still here? Yes. Okay. So I don't know who that middle person is, but I, I'm feeling like your dad's probably... This is definitely your dad. Um, okay. Now... Is there a dog that passed that would be with your dad? I'm seeing a big black dog. Chopper. Okay, because there's a yeah. there's a big black dog with your dad, and I your dad is um you know he's coming through the way you remember him when you know you know when you guys were very happy together you know and he's saying that uh, that's the way I see him. He's got a little bit of. Um, He's got some, uh, he's got like a beard or some facial hair and he's got his yeah. hair a little bit longer. Like, you know, like people would have worn it like in the seventies or, you know, yeah. he's got his hair a little bit longer. Quite a handsome guy. He's got his jeans on and his flannel shirt. Would you understand that? So oh he would kind of look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the way he's coming. Um, he's also, why do I get a taste of alcohol? Did he drink? Um, there's a lot of. He did drink, yeah. Okay. I want to say I'm definitely feeling like that's a part of his demise. He's saying, I drank too much. I shouldn't have drank so much. Um, I want to be really honest with you. Was there a gun mm-hmm. involved? No. Not so, that I'm aware Okay. Of. For some reason, I see a gun. I don't know what that is. The other question I had for you is, do you know the name Michael? Because he keeps giving me that name. Michael. And do you have a connection with Andrew, Andy, Anderson? Anderson, Andrew. Well, Anderson is my um, maiden name, my dad's last oh, name. Oh, your dad's last name. Okay. But you, I, I don't know why. Okay, Michael. I don't know who that. Your dad's saying something about have you talked to Michael. You know, I'm feeling that your dad is telling me. Are you still there? Yes, this is something that he caused himself, he's saying. This is something that he. Yeah. And he said, please don't. Um, I, I, I'm not getting the, he's not using the word suicide, but he's saying, I brought this about myself. I'm leaning less away from an accident at this point. I'm feeling that he, there was some intention here. 
Um, now, was it more of a little bit of a cry for help that went f- too far? I feel like that might be the case. But I'm not getting that this was just a bona fide accident. I, and I want to be honest with you and not tell you something that I don't feel. And that's sort of the connection I'm getting. I'm not getting the word suicide, though. So I feel like it's um, I, I can definitely feel when this when your dad is coming through. He really regretted this. Like, you know, he, 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 you know, he, reg- did he not get to meet your children? He must not have gotten to meet your children, right? He didn't, no. Okay. Because there's one in particular. I mean, I'm sure, how many do you have? Three? I just, no, I just have the one. Okay. Is it the M? Yes. Okay, because he's showing me an M, one that he connects with. And he's talking about two others, so I don't know if those are your, I don't know who the other two are, but there's an M boy he keeps talking about, like, let her know I'm connected to this M boy I watch over. He's more interested in talking about the future, how happy he is on the other side. I I think that he had depression, and he just is saying, Mm -hmm. you know, he wants to remember you, you know, the way you guys, like, were when you were really happy and stuff and, 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 you know, hugging and stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, dear. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you so much for calling, Maria. Okay, he was spot on. Thank you. All right, wonderful stuff. Yeah, just sometimes they, you know, it's the way they give information is just you have to just kind of follow the information. So it's like they don't really think in terms of, you know, sometimes they'll say, yes, I did. So, you know, no, I did. But with him, I was just feeling like he was kind of like he didn't almost want maybe, you know, sometimes they don't want to talk about things in a public forum, too. I get it. And, <laughs> and I guess being on WABC radio is pretty public. But uh, it's just amazing and wonderful to hear you get these messages just it's simultaneously as they're being asked. It's just incredible. Incredible. Thank Manhattan you. medium Thomas John is in the house, and I'm so grateful he's helping to inaugurate, kick off my first Above and Beyond with Laura Smith here on 77 WABC. May we have uh, many se- Sunday nights at 7 to go, but we have more readings to do when we come back after this. So stick on the line. If we don't get to everybody, I'm sorry, but I, as I mentioned, Thomas is going to be back again this month, and we're going to we're going to do it all over again. So we'll be right back. You're listening again to Above and Beyond with Laura Smith. Don't go away. 77 WABC Above and Beyond with Laura Smith, your new Sunday night show at 7 p.m. If you got a reading tonight and you want to hear it again, the podcast will be up on WABCRadio.com. And don't uh, be too distraught if you didn't get through tonight. I do apologize. We only have an hour. But Thomas John is going to be back again and maybe once or even twice this month. And also you can meet him this coming Wednesday at the Upper West Side Barnes & Noble, which is on 82nd, between 82nd and 83rd on Broadway and get there at six o'clock for the seven o'clock talk readings and book signing it's all happening this Wednesday April Fool's Day all right we're going to go right back to the phones we're going to do the the readings quicker now you're going to get a little bit shorter time but this is so we can get more in so drive by readings Maria from Westchester you're next yes hi enjoying your show quick question I am looking all over my house for this one envelope of important documents I can't find it anywhere can you help me? Okay. Um, so you, it was an, you said it was an envelope that had a yeah. lot of documents in it? Yes, quite a few important things. Mm-hmm. And I know it's yeah. No, somewhere. it's definitely in your house. So I'm going to just just where help. Yeah. <laughs> help. Um. I where I'm seeing it is I de- I see a drawer. I can see a drawer with a brass knob, and I is it is it Manila? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I, I, I see it. Yeah, I see a, it's a manila thing. You know, it's, it's, I feel like it's under things that you, you know, not paper stuff. Like I'm really heavier stuff. Like I'm almost thinking like maybe books or it could be albums, but it's almost under things. It's not, I, I almost feel like you picked, somebody picked up other stuff and sort of put it, like didn't realize it was there and just put some stuff in a drawer. It looks like, Maybe somebody cleaning or, or, or even you just trying to organize stuff. It, I, I feel like it's in a drawer. It's upstairs. Are you, are you two floors? Yeah, well, quite a few, few yes. It, it, it's not on your ground floor. I mean, I almost, I feel like it's on your second floor. Second floor? And then we still have another floor over that, so. But you're saying this is no, the second No, not so bedroom? much. It's more in the, yeah, it's more, it feels more on the second floor. And Maria, we're going to end it there, but I hope you find that. You Would you call. please let us know? Call us back up when you find it and on the next show. That would be great. Jean in Queens, real quick. Hello, yes. My mother passed. I'd love to hear from her and a friend who died suddenly last year. What's your mother's name, honey? Mary. Oh, okay. 
And were you taking care of her at the end? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I could feel her just saying thank you for taking care of me and stuff. You know, one thing I was feeling is that she she was definitely ready to go. Um, I feel, you know, she she's telling me she was ready. She was ready to be over there. And were you like in the room when she crossed? Uh, no, I just left her though. Okay, I I feel like you know she's just bringing up the end where you were in the you know there and stuff. And she said like, I don't know if you think about her, you know that she you weren't there right at the split second. But she said it. She almost when she left her physical body, I felt like she wanted to be alone. Is the is the friend a, a, a woman? Yes. Okay, there is another woman here who's showing me like a heart thing, but I don't know if that's her or not. What's your friend's first name? Elvira. Hmm. I don't know. Did she have a heart ta- heart attack? Uh, they said she died from pneumonia. Okay, could be because I'm getting a lot of stuff. I, I get a lot of stuff in the chest, but it's more your mom coming through, and she's your mom is also telling me look for pennies because she's telling me that's a way that she sends like a communication to you or lets you know that she's around. Is she happy? Oh yeah, she's really a, 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 she's with her mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, is she with me? I yeah, mean, yeah. Mom. Look for the pennies because I feel like that's the way that you're going to connect with her. Is the through pe- look for the pennies and no messages from her. Well, she's at peace and she she just wants to thank you for what you, what you did for her. Jean, I think I'm sorry to cut you off, my darling, but that's as much as we can and do on that. Um, can you do thirty seconds on Joan, or is that too hard? That might be a little. She t- wants to know if she should sell sell her ho- house. Can you do I it do in ten seconds? Her, yes, we can click her on real quick. Go ahead, Joan. Yeah, should I sell and move to where and to what, or should I make this at 72 years old my lasting place? I see you moving more around, like more in a couple years. I don't see you, uh, I don't see you being all, the other thing is, is they're telling me don't sell yourself short because I'm feeling like you have another 15 to 20 years, really strong years. You're not somebody who's going to have a lot of health problems as you get older. I mean, little things, but I'm feeling like you have a lot lot of longevity. So. A couple of years, then she can stay in her house. I, I, I see her staying in her house, and then moving somewhere a little bit warmer. All right, Jean or Joan. Sorry, I hope that was helpful. Phew. All right, drive by readings. <laughs> we, need a, we need a little. We need a little honking. Now, yeah, we, we'll, we'll have to get a little <laughs> bell honk, or something honk. like that. <laughs> honk honk. Manhattan Medium, Thomas John. You're okay. such a gift. Thanks I thank you so me. very much. And again, if you want to meet Thomas in person, buy his brand new book, Never Argue with a Dead Person: True and Unbelievable Stories from the Other Side. If you liked what you heard tonight, imagine a whole book of these extraordinary stories. They're all true, and they're all very deeply beautiful so i'm so grateful to have you you. here go see him wednesday night april 1st at the barnes and noble up on 82nd and 83rd street on broadway he'll be there at 7 p.m but 6 is when you should get there and get in line uh to get a reading and the rest of it thomas thank you i love you thank you so much thank you so much and i want to thank some people that helped me tonight i would say christine sweeney and my wonderful producers matt meany jennifer ramirez also michael mojito and my executive producer janice ring and uh, also Jake Hirsch for voicing tonight and I also uh, want to wish you all a very very happy Easter and a happy Passover which is starting as well much love to all of you in this sacred time of the year I hope you enjoyed the show please go to wabcradio.com to hear the podcast and we'll be back after Easter with another edition of Above and Beyond with Laura Smith and I'm going to re- leave you with this quote by Mary Baker Eddy because I think it's it, good for the season it's divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. Take that with you. Much love to you. Thanks for joining me tonight on Above and Beyond.